Hi, in this video I'll just briefly review the Pearson correlation coefficient. Of course, that's the most popular measure of correlation, but mostly just so we have a baseline to compare to the two measures of rank correlation. So specifically, we'll look at the Spearman rank correlation and the Kendall's Kendall's Tau rank correlation. So these two are measures of ordinal correlation as opposed to a measure of cardinal correlation. And in computing the Kendall's Tau, which has a formula that's easier to remember, we will have to count up the number of concordant versus discordant pairs. And that's an interesting concept in itself. So I look forward to looking at these two measures of rank correlation, which are the lesser known alternatives to the very popular Pearson's correlation. So first we start with the most common measure of correlation and that's the Pearson's correlation coefficient. It does have a longer name, Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, but you rarely see that. However, when you do read something like two stocks or two assets have a correlation of X or Y, in most cases, it's a reference to the Pearson's correlation coefficient as a measure of cardinal correlation. And so the example of that is here where I've copied Messner's number in his chapter three, and we just have the annual returns for two assets, asset X and X, asset Y. And this is a small sample over five years, 2009, 2013 inclusive. But you can see here the returns are not in chronological order, and that's because this small sample is sorted according to the returns for asset X, the first asset. So here we have for asset X, its worst return happened to be in 2012 at negative 15.8% approximately. And its best return was the year before that in 2011, here almost 76%. And um, in the case of Y, these of course are not, neither sorted by the year or uh, worst to best because it's a sort according to X. So in 2012, asset Y returned a little over 17%. And in 2010, it returned 100%. And the returns here are plotted on the scatter plot here for a this small return. And then I've had Excel draw a line, a regression line for me. And I've also used Excel to calculate the covariance as for sample between X and Y, and then the correlation here using Excel's C-O-R-R-E-L. In correlation, you don't need to distinguish between sample and population because the N minus ones cancel. But in Excel, this core L function does refer to the Pearson's correlation coefficient. And we could also have done it somewhat manually by taking the covariance and dividing by the product of the standard deviations, and we'd get the same correlation. Also, because this is a univariate regression, in the case of the univariate regression, the R, the correlation, which we also could call a small r, although it's almost always denoted Greek rho, if we squared it, you see that the uh, correlation coefficient, the R, if we squared it, we would actually get the coefficient of determination, a measure of goodness of fit for the regression line, in this case, 0.55. That's pretty good, I think. Nonetheless, what we have here, you can see, is a negative correlation, negative 0.74. That's a pretty strong negative correlation. And as a me the Pearson's correlation coefficient, it has some well-known weaknesses. I won't list maybe all four or five of them, but I'll just mention the first two. The first, first important weakness of the Pearson's correlation coefficient, very well known, is that it's a measure of linear dependence. When we say dependence, we could also say association between two variables, but lots of variables have non-linear relationships or non-linear dependence, non-linear association. The Pearson's correlation coefficient is a measure only of linear dependence and therefore won't pick up non-linear dependence. 
That leads to a second weakness that is really follows from the first one, which is the following, that if assets are, or returns in this case, or variables, just generically, if they are independent, then it follows that the correlation will be zero. The Pearson's correlation coefficient will be zero. However, if the Pearson's correlation coefficient is zero, because it's a measure just of linear dependence or association, that does not imply independence because they could be non-linearly dependent. Okay, so another feature of the Pearson's correlation coefficient, because it's a measure of cardinal correlation here, is that it will be sensitive to outliers. So I think the example that Messner does in his chapter three, I'm using his same numbers, I think he doubles the outliers. So you'll notice we start negative seven, a negative 0.74, and then if I just double each of the outliers here and the 75% to 150%, my correlation does increase or become less negative to negative 0.6, still a negative association. But you can see as a measure of cardinal correlation, it is sensitive to the outliers. Okay, so that will lead us to the two measures of ordinal correlation that will not be sensitive to the outliers. So this is a difference and maybe an advantage or a disadvantage depending on our purpose. But we're now, when we look at the Spearmans and the Kendalls, they will not be sensitive to my change in the outlier here. So starting with the Spearmans rank correlation, and you'll notice now I've highlighted the idea that this is rank. We're, doing a, we're now doing a measure of ordinal correlation, although we have the same values here but we're just going to translate them into the ranks. And because these are, were sorted by asset X in the first place, one, two, three, four, five is easy. And then it's just the asset Y that depends. Here we have asset Y had its worst return in 2013, so that's why we have a one. My scatter plot similarly, instead of showing those cardinal measures of actual return, is now just plotting the ordinal measures of rank. But we can see here, we could still visually see the intuition of a negative relationship, although in my opinion, with this smaller sample, a more approximate, oh, I shifted a little bit, it makes more sense to look at an approximate relationship of rank correlation here, rather than engage in the false precision of a linear and cardinal relationship that we just looked at with Pearson's. So for the Spearman's rank correlation, right, that formula is going to be given by, we could denote it using rho as a very universally well-known correlation measure, but then Messner gives it a subscript of S for Spearman's, and then it's going to be 1 minus 6 multiplied by the sum of the differences squared. So this is d sub i as i goes from 1 to n. And the 6 is just due to mathematics of the formula. And we divide that by n multiplied by the quantity n squared minus 1. So that's our measure for Spearman's rank correlation. And then right here, I've calculated it. So, so here are my d sub i. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're really doing a summation. Um, that's a capital sigma, one through n, one through five here. Here's my difference. And this is d sub i is just the difference in ranks. One minus four is negative three. Two minus five is negative three. Three minus three is zero. Four minus one is three. Five minus two is three. And so here we get a difference in ranks. And you might notice, what if we had sort of perfect conditions where y ranked just along with x? Then this would all be zeros. And my summation here would be zero. I would have one minus zero. And my Spearman's rank correlation would be a perfect one. Okay, that's not the case here. So now I'm just in this column simply squaring. Negative three squared is nine. Negative three squared is nine. So... I have a squared, basically a squared difference. And then I sum them 
right here is, you can see uh, 9 times 4 is 36. So that 36 is right here. And then I'll just turn this off and look at the formula. And you can see there I just finished the uh, experiments rank right here. 1 minus 6 times the summation divided by, in this case, n uh, n squared minus 1 multiplied by n, or 5 squared minus 1 multiplied by 5. And I get a Spearman's rank correlation of negative 0.8. And so um, even sort of even a lower value, more negative, slightly stronger negative uh, correlation than I would have got with the Pearson's product moment correlation, or just Pearson's correlation. So that's the Spearman's rank correlation. And then one difference, an advantage or disadvantage, depending on what we're doing with it, or a use case, right? Recall with the Pearsons, when I when I doubled the outliers, I got a difference. But here, these are ranked, and so it does not change here, the ranks. And so this Spearman's rank is uh, robust to changes in outlier. So that's Spearman's rank, first of the two um, ordinal rank correlation measures, and then the second is the Kendall's tau rank correlation. And for the Kendall's tau, the key thing that we need is we need a count of the concordant as opposed to discordant pairs or the pairs which can be neither. And so here we have five years, and that means we have 10 pairs, right? Why does five um, how do we know that we have 10 pairs from five if we had a larger number? Well, it's a triangle number, right? It's going to be, and it's going to be the denominator of our Kendall's tau. If we have n pairs, then n, mi n multiplied by n minus one divided by two gives us the number of pairs. That's called the triangle number because that would be the number of uh, cells in the lower or upper or diagonal of a five by five rectangle. But in this case, we have a, uh, Five, n is 5, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 5 times 4 divided by 2 equals 10 pairs. And you can see I've got that right here. And then we need to count the concordant or discordant pairs. And what does that mean? Well, easy just to illustrate. Let me just take here the first two pairs. We're comparing now. 2012, which is a pair of x, y, and 2010. So if I take these two pairs here, if I just pull them out, I have a 1 and a 4, and then a 2 and a 5, right? x and y. Well, if we look at the x, the 2 is greater than the 1, and the 5 is greater than the 4. So this pair is concordant because directionally, X and Y are, are going in the same direction. Now let me look at uh, 2012 compared to 2009. So that's this pair compared to this pair. And so then we have 1 and 4, 3 and 3. So if we look at X, it's increasing. 3 is greater than 1. Increasing here, however, y changes and decreases, so to speak. Here, the 3 is less than 4, and so this is a discordant pair. I think it's much easier to visualize this. That's why I developed the graphics that I showed on the first page. So if we look at the scatter plot here, keeping in mind that we're going to have total 10 pairs, I'm just going to walk through the count here that produces the final result for us that's already shown here in my uh, spreadsheet where these cells, they borrow uh, off to the right. I just do some um, matrix uh, addition and subtraction that makes this uh, uh, spreadsheet scalable to additional entries. But you can see here's the final result, 10 pairs. We're gonna have two concordant pairs, eight discordant pairs, and then do need to sum to 10. And keep in mind, pairs can be neither. And so, uh, but in this case, we have zero neither. Okay, so we're going to need to account for 10 pairs, but I'm just going to start here on the left. If I, this, if I start here with this dot, notice I, got, I have a one pair here, a pair here, a pair here, 
and a pair here. So just starting with 2012, that's one, two, three, four pairs as I go to the other four points. Now, this is the only line that goes up and to the right, and that is the only, so far, concordant pair, right? Because I'm comparing here the 1, 4 to the 2, 5. That's right here. And my, so my 2 is greater than 1, and directionally, consistently, my 5 is greater than 4. So if I just keep a count here, concordant, that's my 1 concordant. And my other, 1, 2, 3, are discordant. Now I'm done with that point. I'm just going to move left to right and go to the 2010, which I don't need to go back to the 2012. Already accounted for that concordance. And now then I should just have three lines to draw. One, two, three. And they all went downhill, so to speak. That reflecting these, all three of these were discordant. One, two, three discordant. Now I'm going to go to the 2000, oh, oh, I guess that's the 2009, a little hard to see. And I only have two lines to draw for it, uh, down to 2013 and down to 2011. Again, negative direction. That's both discordant, one, two. And then finally, 2013, I've accounted for all other relationships except the relationship between this pair, which is the only other connection you can see where I've gone on an upward slope, just like right here, that's concordant. Notice, two concordant pairs and five, six, seven, eight discordant pairs. So visually, that's how I like to think about it. And now having accounted for all of those, I can then go to the Kendall's Tau, try to do my Greek Kendall's Tau. And it's a simpler form to remember, I think. Number of concordant minus number of discordant in the numerator divided by in the denominator, it's really the total number of pairs. That's that triangle number, n times, whoops, n times n minus 1 divided by 2. And so we've already said that is 10 total pairs. And here we have 8 minus 2 concordant minus discordant is 6. Oh, I'm sorry. 2 minus 8 is negative 6, giving us the Kendall's tau of negative 0.6. And if you're following along uh, with Messner's book, then he's he's actually got an incorrect value. I think it's 0.2, yeah, that he's showing. But uh, we, uh, our members, uh, identified uh, his miscalculation on the concordant discordant, and he's confirmed that uh, our calculation is correct here. So it is different from the book, although be assured, even Messner himself agrees that the correct Kendall's tau for this data set is negative 0.60. So Kendall's tau... Also a measure of, again, ordinal rank correlation, just like the Spearmans would be indifferent to shocks to the outliers as well. So that has an advantage or disadvantage depending on our use case. But that covers the two primary uh, rank correlation measures, Spearmans and Kendall's, that are in Mes Messner's Chapter 3. If you like this video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of my next video. Thank you.